<laughs> Our guests in this first segment, some of the uh, Berkeley County Council are now commissioned, thankfully. Eddie Gokenauer. Eddie, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. And the county uh, administrator now, Gary Wine. Good morning, Rob. Hey, man, how you been? I'm wonderful, thank you. Is this the first time I've introduced you as county commi- a county no, administrator? No, I made it once before. Yeah? Yeah, you and the admiral. Oh, that's right. You treated me with baby gloves, and when I got back to the office, everyone was like, really? Is that how you get treated there? It's usually rough. <laughs> No, man. Hey, how do you get along with Andy Blake? Wonderful. Andy's a good man. He'll be your uh, your city uh, counterpart, I guess, uh, very soon. We're looking forward to it. We uh, had a long relationship with Andy, so it'll be it'll be good things. Toward the end of uh, October, I think, is when Mark's final day is. That's what I hear. I, when uh, we advertised a position here recently and got a text from Mark with a big smiley face, I said, that doesn't sound like retirement. He said, yeah, I was just kidding anyway. So. <laughs> well, very nice. Well, recently the county put out its annual report, and uh, maybe we can go over some of the highlights of those things. And a uh, question for you, Eddie, is, is is Gary more the driver of the information on this or, or you? Uh, Gary absolutely is. Uh, I, I tell you, Gary has absolutely just hit the ground running he hasn't stopped uh, and I, I don't really like for that because I, I like for him to stop every now and then just to catch his breath but mm-hmm. he's doing a tremendous job he really is I mean he just he works so hard uh, and everybody's bombarded him with different ideas and you know it, it's you know uh, Alan was in that position you know for a long time and you know that's that's just the way that was mm-hmm. but but Gary brings in you know, new ideas, new opportunities, new thought process. So uh, it's it's been really exciting. Gary, some of the highlights of the annual report for Berkeley County. How much of this did you work on, and how much was uh, was Alan Davis involved in this? This was a hundred percent Alan. So you're you're recapping what happened last year. Mm-hmm. Um, I think probably maybe to some of the listeners, one of the most important things was is that as the county continues to grow, the demands on their services continue to grow. That through their efforts and everything that the levy rate that the, the taxes are, are based on actually was reduced from uh, 1381 to 13.39. Mm-hmm. So that's a, that's a big statement. Now that's not a voluntary reduction. Um, one of the things that's in the state code that we deal with is called the rollback. So if the county grows more than 102%, uh, they have to roll the levy rate back, but it's still to the advantage of the taxpayer. If the county grows more than 102% in what? Dollars. Dollars. And revenues collected. Correct. Okay. Right. So it's a mandatory rollback and every county has to follow those guidelines. They do. It's fine and dandy for non-growth counties, but for growth counties that have big demands on the services that my bosses provide, uh, it hurts. So does this, this acts as a curb on how much the taxpayers could be exposed to in terms of annual increases in their real estate property that's assessments? It, that's exactly. Real estate and personal. And that's personal. exactly what it does. So the, the net result of the rollback for us was a loss of about, a, or a non-realized gain of about $800,000. Are you essentially expending that money in services and unable to collect it? In a growth county, uh, we're up against the wall with demand for the tax dollar. So a lot of the initiatives, and, and Eddie, it, one close and dear to his heart is is paid firefighters. So we could use that money to grow firefighters. We could use it for law enforcement. All, our public service, our public safety is taxed to its limit. Um, and again, it only really impacts growth counties, mm-hmm. um, of which you know there aren't a lot. There's Berkeley and Jefferson. And Montegalia. Montegalia. And Putnam. And that's it. So four out of 55. Yeah, well, they, there's there's a few others that they classify as growth, but they're I think growth. Morgan, maybe. Yeah. It, it, well, and I believe that they actually classified Lewis as a growth county because of gas. Natural gas is huge. So is is growth tracked as revenues or population? Well, that was <laughs> that was my question, so I didn't get a straight answer. To us, growth, population, demand, and others, maybe they see it in revenue. Uh, but again growth in population which is demand on tax tax dollar services we see as population yeah actually in charleston it is it is the revenue that they determine a growth county uh, there's also it's interesting in what a, a, a section of the law called the local powers act which i worked on many years ago and it's the one that says that you can have impact fees there it defines a growth county by population but in terms of uh, of of uh, 
property taxes. It, deferred, it, 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 it defines a growth county by the revenue they collect. And you're right. It has... It, 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 it says that if, if you grow to 2%, forget whether that 2% growth in revenue was a result of a 10% population growth. They, the, 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 it, it, it totally ignores it. It's, it's really maddening, and, it, and it's stupid. Is there a way to counter it? Um, persuade enough legislators. And I'm trying to think. Uh, Eddie, you may know this. Is it in statute or is it in the Constitution? I used to know the answer to that question, but I don't, but I can't remember. If it's in the Constitution, then what you have to do is run a constitutional amendment. Uh, and uh, my, I, I think I remember it being in statute, but I'm not sure. And if it's statute, then you just get the legislature to change it and just say, yeah, 2% growth in revenue compared to what kind of growth in population, and then that would uh, uh, make a lot more sense. Well. Every stupid law made sense to somebody or else it wouldn't be there at the time. So what is the rationalization behind this? I think the rationalization is uh, that we presume that no county is ever going to grow in population. Well, that's discouraging. <laughs> yeah. That's the underlying assumption I, behind I think, that theory. Whether it's in the Constitution or whether it's in statute, that is the underlying assumption. I think you're absolutely right, John. I, and that's been a problem for Berkeley County all along is mm -hmm. nobody expected the, uh, the growth that we've had in this county that has impacted our roads, our schools, our police, fire, EMS. Nobody expected that uh, to happen here. And it's obviously happened. We can prove it for the last 20 years. Somebody needs to wake up. Senator Jason Barrett is listening. He says Lewis had a small population increase. There are eight counties with a population increase. Property tax rollback is in code, not constitution. Ah, so that's a little bit easier to get it changed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Gary, somebody uh, moves into the county, buys a house, and uh, at the cusp of whether or not they fit into this year's assessment or not how long might it be in the worst case scenario from the time they move in till the time they get assessed pay their taxes and the county actually receives the money what might be the longest amount of time that goes by well if, i mean if the house is not new construction i mean it's already on the tax rolls so there's no change right mm -hmm. so but if they come in and build a house uh it it could essentially be it it depends on the window um Let's talk about personal property. So you come in and you move your cars from Maryland to West Virginia. And right now, we won't see that revenue until July 1, 2025. 2025? Yes, sir. 2025. So, so nearly two years. Almost, yeah. So in, in the roles of the real are, are similar. Uh, but again, if it's, a, if it's real that's already on the books and the house already exists, it just transfers from one owner to pay to the next. So no delay there, but None. new construction could be almost Slow. two years. Could be. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a way to fix that? Is that really what we're talking about here with code, or is no. that just the way the time rolls? That's just the way the time rolls. No, you can't fix that. I mean, and that's not the issue, really, right? Because the house, once it get in, you get in, and by the time everything rolls around, we don't feel the demand from you, right? So um, that the, the real issue is is with the growth, like, John said, um, as we grow, one of the eight, right, that are defined as growth counties, the demand for the services. And, mm -hmm. and it's really, in, in county government, it's our demand really is on, at, pub, at the public safety level, right? Internally on administration, it's not, I mean, we're fine. Uh, but man, as the population grows, the demand on fire law and EMS and 911 is unbelievable. Yeah, but so but if I move in, let's say I've got six kids and they're all school age, they're all going into the schools. But that's the school system, not county government. So the the, the division of the the money's collected, right? So the division of the money's collected. The the school system sees nearly eighty percent mm -hmm. of the real and personal tax dollars. We operate on about seventeen percent. Right. Do the. I'm, I still haven't. You're telling me there's like a two-year delay before the county gets that it's assessment the same money. With the school. Same with the schools, right? But that I, I can't speak to the the school formula where they get their monies mm -hmm. from the state for that pupil. Well, speak right? to the speak to the EMS emergency services and such. I know in the budget I see you have a sixty-seven 
deputies or positions set up within the sheriff's department. I, I move in and I need those services. I need fire EMS, but you're not getting revenue from me for almost two years. That's correct. But you got to provide the services. Hundred percent. Yeah, and, and there's there's no way to counter that lag time. There there isn't. So, the legislative priorities for the county commission. One of their top legislative priorities is to try and urge the legislature to allow home rule to counties and not just cities. Uh, it would be a game changer for us. Um, a one percent sales tax, if you will. So instead of raising the fees for the property owners on their personal or real. The one percent sales tax, a usage tax. So if you don't spend the money, it doesn't cost you anything. We have eighty thousand vehicles that go up and down Interstate eighty one between Maryland and Virginia every day that stop, shop, do all kinds of things in this quarter, and they don't pay a dime of our growth issues. Um, we believe that they do pay sales tax though when they shop, but that doesn't come back to you. It goes to the zero. state. That's correct. So we've identified and potentially about an eight an eight million dollar revenue source if we could see a one percent sales tax in Berkeley County. Some of that inevitably would be paid by county residents. Though. Some of it would be. Some of it would be, but not all. But not all. Well, there's a short term and a long term windfall that are coming our way with the opioid settlement. Right there's the initial. Uh, the the uh, the percentage that I get wrong, like the first fifteen percent, and then there's what, what's going to be distributed by the committees. Does that help? Or do we have plans to spend the, those windfalls on sure. such things? Well, I mean, it will help uh, obviously, and I know that the f the first uh, first bit of money they say there's there's not have a whole lot of strings attached to it, but we'll see at what what requirements. It's like five million dollars that, that they have. Well, Seven. who knows. Seven. Yeah, so we're, we hear all kinds of numbers about what's what's coming, but the 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 basic foundation of this money is to be able to help curb and uh, get a handle on this addiction in the county. So a lot of those monies will be addressed to that. That's what it was designed for. And now, now some of the first monies they say you can pay you can pay your jail bill because there's a lot of counties that do not. Uh, they're not able to pay their jail bill. I, I think a very strong argument that fire and EMS specifically and police are directly tied For sure. to the solving those issues. Sure they are. Yeah, I mean they're they're on every nearly every response. Yeah. Uh, so it, there's a cost factor there. There's there's all all kinds of, of factors involved there. Sure. Yeah, but that's that's one time money. Obviously, applying that to re recurring expenses would be financial suicide. But you know, it's a great annuity, <laughs> right? Right. So one of the things that the county commission is involved in, we're right as we sit today and we speak about growth, they're involved in thirty six million dollars worth of construction renovation projects. And that's that kind of money could be applied to debt service on those or other things to free up liquid to do other. Yeah. Gary Wine and Eddie Gokenau are our guests here on the program. Hey, let's move uh, uh, along here to uh, Parks and Rec. And the long-term plans in uh, Berkeley County there and talk about the Inwood Park and uh, what could be a time frame on that and a total expenditure on that, Gary and Eddie. So right now, uh, the the County Commission has purchased a property. Eddie, how many acres was it? 22. 22 acres in Inwood. Um, they're in the middle of a, a study and design process for the project. Um, we've seen designs from 15 million to 2 million so now the the game is let's get it where it fits something that's actually affordable and what we could do uh, some of the we, we we've seen some pictures that looks like we were in downtown san diego they were really awesome mm -hmm. uh, but we, we need to see realistic options eddie I, let eddie speak a little bit because he's been involved in that since the very beginning eddie you're the liaison to parks and rec yeah correct? and uh yeah of course you know, we got I've got a real good team uh, when we meet. You know, I've got Steve uh, there as well, as well as Bob Williams with Parks and Rec, to uh, you know help pull all this together and and share ideas and thought process. But uh, you know, it it's uh, it's right in the heart of Inwood. It, it's a beautiful location. It's across from the high school, so we're really hoping that the high school will be able to take advantage of it as well. So uh, there's a, there are a lot of opportunities. Uh, you know, when we talk about a $15 million park, we can't do that. I mean, that's realistically, we cannot do that. So we have to figure out what we can afford and what's going to fit nice in that community to where everybody can get out and enjoy it. So we're really looking forward to it. I'm hoping in spring, by spring, we'll be pushing dirt. 
that's that's a goal. So uh, we're working with our CEC uh, uh, engineering firm. Uh, they're also working with us on the Route 9 uh, connection to Frog Hollow. So, uh, you know, and of course they're already working with the city there. So there's a, there's a lot of connecting points uh, that need to be made. But, um, yeah, it's it's moving. You know, it's, it's a slow process. There's a big span between 2 million and, and 15 million, right? <laughs> sure. So what are the essential elements of, of a park? What what make yeah. it a park and what in well i mean you know we got to get a road in we got to get a parking lot in we need a, a restroom we need our stormwater management well there's yeah. a million right there okay <laughs> you, you keep adding and, <laughs> and, and now now we're going to do a, a walking path you know around the 22 acre site uh and maybe up through uh you know I'm, we have to have a playground in a park i mean what park does not have a right. playground so uh we're hoping for an amphitheater and a, and a portion of it uh, there, there are open. There's an open field for all type of activity. Whether you know kids want to come in and play soccer, throw fris frisbee, you know, whatever they want to do. Um, yeah, there's there's a, a splash pad, a water feature, which is you know, the the design that they showed us was tremendous. Um, so because everybody yells for a park, well, we, you know, the the pool's very expensive to build. It's very expensive to maintain so and the, and the liability of it so you know let's let's maybe do a, a splash pad of some sort so the that's uh, that's the the premise you know really of the uh, of the park design and uh okay yeah. i'm going to be deliberately provocative here okay i'm going to I'm going to be kind of a, a just jerky question but in a county it's we've got a pockets of the same suit with with money in it right we can spend it here we can spend it there so when we're talking about issues with ems and fire and all of that one could argue that we already have parks maybe we don't need another park maybe we should spend that money on something else so how are those decisions made and, and what are your what are your thoughts well i mean the thing about it is is this park is not really being built by our county tax dollars there there's quality life fund that's been set up by the by the county commission uh and there's some arpa funds that may be available there are some uh we're, we're trying to get some money from the federal uh folks we've got we've got some grants uh, opportunities so it's not like those dollars are being taken from police fire ems because i can assure you uh, i think about it every day of how we can get our firehouses staffed every volunteer fire department has request staffing I know for a fact that it's needed, and I, not just I, I say I, but I, I mean, I do think about it every day. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of them, but I do. Uh, so uh, it's important to me that when people call 911 and they need a fire truck, it's important to me that they get one right away, not a delayed response. And before your Facebook feed pops up, uh, definitely some pickleball. Oh, yeah. I was literally going to ask that. that. Yeah, be careful. If yeah, it's it, a park it's, and doesn't have pickleball, it's not a park in today's park. <laughs> yeah. Hey, will there be a uh, meeting uh, of any sort of collaboration in regards to the discussion currently renewed because of the Lambert Pool situation in the city of Martinsburg right now about some type of indoor pool complex with the schools, the city, the county, maybe with some help from some state funding, getting together to build some type of indoor pool complex that the Berkeley County Schools could use for swim meets and, of course, the population could use for year-round swimming and lessons and such. Yeah, Steve and I just met uh, last week with uh, WVUE East, um, the city of Martinsburg, uh, and, and we had that discussion. Uh, you know, we really and truly feel that for it to be able to be maintained uh, properly, that the, the health service needs to be involved in that uh, because they have a lot of activities that they can use the pool for. By the health service, a, you, you're talking about the hospital or WVU the health department? East. No, okay. no, 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 WVU right. East, uh, where they can bring folks in for rehab and whatnot. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure how that's going to move. Uh, once again, it's, it's a very expensive uh, project. So, uh, you know, we're all sitting there like, okay, how can we do this? You know, we, we want it. You know, we all want it. How do we figure it? How do we fund it? You know, so it's still still a lot of stuff up in the air. Any idea what kind of cost we're talking about? Preliminary projection? Yeah, you're at a minimum of $25 million. That's the minimum. And, uh, you know, there's 
you know, along, it's just not a pool with a roof, you know, enclosure. It's, it's, a, it's a whole facility, you know, so it's, it's a lot of money. Uh, you know, the hospital has, has offered uh, the property uh, for it out, out near their facility right now. So, um, you know, that's, that's there. Okay, you don't have to purchase that, but now you're still looking at a tremendous amount of money. So, yeah, and the the recurring support costs they estimate are about two million a year. Sure. Yeah. It costs a lot to maintain a monthly Correct. an indoor swimming pool. Correct. Nine nine months out of the year, the outdoor ones you shut down. The indoor ones you got to keep going for the full twelve months. Yeah. So, uh, was there a previous land commitment by the hospital before Eddie? Is that a new commitment, or has that always been there? No, it's it's a new commitment. Yeah, it's a new. Because I hadn't heard about this before. Uh, yeah. Um, it was just one of the things that was on the table. You know, there's something they felt that they could offer, and uh, you know, it's it. Hey, at least it's, it gets us a start. Mm -hmm. But uh, so okay, so where we find all those other millions at? You know, and, and I'm like John. If I've got millions, I'm putting police, firemen, and EMS, and dispatchers, and school resource officers on the ground. That would appear to be a priority. It is. John, are there typically state funds for parks and rec items like this that are available? Um, n not. In the normal course of things, uh, on occasion, uh, there'll be there'll be grants available for stuff like that. But I I don't think there's a, it's not a program like is available for say libraries where every year you, a, a county can get get grant get uh, a, a grant from say the state library commission to do something. It's uh, that that is not, in, t to my knowledge, any kind of a permanent source of money that's sitting there. Could you consider it's, it partly tourism? Since if you have an indoor pool and you can have schools with indoor meets, you can have s giant swim meet tournaments where s people from other states come in, uh, at least other near nearby states. At but least. That is true. But, but if it's going to bring the schools in, then you're talking about uh, the State Board of Education and or the School Building Authority is going to participate in that. And that's a case where it's a group of people that decides in, ad hoc is this a good use of this particular money? And so you apply to, say, the school building authority. And if you're going to build a school, you're going to build a pool big enough uh, or, a, or a complex big enough to serve more than just the school. Mm -hmm. uh, then you get in into a big debate. Is, is this the purpose of the school building authority? And sometimes they say yeah, and sometimes they say no. I want to, before we run out of time, get to the Day Report Center and its uh, performance and use over the last 12 months, uh, Gary and Eddie. So I think probably, uh, first and foremost, the intent, uh, obviously, to, you know, kind of lend help instead of incarcerate, right? But to a dollar point, there's a $2.3 million worth of cost avoidance with that effort. About $2.1 million to run the center for the same amount of time. So... Uh, it's great to help the community. It's great to help that that citizen that, that's struggling. It's great to help our budget because it offsets the cost of incarceration. So it's a win-win for everybody financially and personally. Um, Eddie's been intimate with that project. We're, we're in a construction project to erect a three-story building to house the growth of that effort. Not a good thing to have, but as a necessity to have. It's mm -hmm. unfortunate that we have that going on here, but it's it's a big problem. But it's not just the county commission, right? The prosecutor's office, the sheriff's department, the magistrates, the judges, it is a collaborative effort. And if they don't all come together and work, it's not successful. Berkeley County has proven that everybody can work together and make it successful. And also on that, on kind of on that same tag is our community resource uh, division. Uh, these folks are saving us about $1.2 million a year in jail fees as well. You know, folks messed up. They are held accountable. You know, they, they do have to give back uh, to our community. So that, that's a great way of helping them and uh, helping the county as well. Uh, is, is that the drawing in the annual report that's that it. you see? That's the rendering. It. That's in. It's, it's, it's coming. Uh, they've started to remodel and move the a temporary entrance into the existing facility mm -hmm. uh, so probably by October they'll be doing dirt work and you'll start to see that thing come out of the ground um, on a side note not just at the day report center but Dems and the efforts they're in the school system so there's outreach involved to be in front of the problem so mm -hmm. it's not just Smart. helping 
when it happens, uh, they're trying to be preemptive and be involved way up front. So they've worked really hard. Uh, if you remember, Councilperson Copenhaver and Delia both took that to heart. Eddie has been right in the mix for several years now. So it's a big commitment, but they've proven that they can take the tax dollar and avoid expenses later to in turn pay for that effort. So it's, it's, it's great. Yeah, that, that was a pretty, uh, not to overstate this, but that was a pretty brave stance by Doug at the time that he took it because this was still and may still be a very stigmatized issue uh, for people. And, and uh, at a time when it wasn't popular to take this stand, Doug went the recovery route and prevention. And uh, I think Berkeley County is the leader in the state in regards to treating with addiction and incarceration the way that we have. And I'm wondering if other counties have reached out to you folks to find out how to follow the model to cut down on their costs and to help save lives. All the time. Uh, if ever you want to delve into that subject, uh, send an invite to Tim Zion, bring him in and talk to him, and he could explain it. But it's, we, we are forever sharing processes and information. Um, the one thing, even though we have lots to offer, it's important to remember that we're just one of 55 counties in this state that have to all work together to be successful. So we're, we're here to work together. Any final questions for our two guests here on the program? Where can our listeners and viewers go to see the annual report? Eddie and uh, Garrett. It's, it's online. I'm it's sure on it's, our website, berkeleywv.org. Berkeleywv.org. Berkeley it's right there. And it's if I check our Facebook page, there's a, there's a link to it. If Twitter, it's it's out there. Matt Umstead. And if we could, um, mm -hmm. Matt Umstead, who's our director of communications and strategic planning, uh, this is his baby. He worked with all the sources to craft this thing. So if anybody deserves credit, Matt Umstead did a really good job pulling all this information, this 21 pages together. Oh, good job, Matt. Yeah. I like Matt Umstead. He's a good guy. He is. He, is. he works hard. Yeah, he was a good hire. Yeah. Hey, thanks to both of you for coming, and much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Gary Wine, Eddie Gokenauer at 834.